Welcome back to Casual Mac Break Studio. <laughs> We're here in uh, Steve's very nice living room. Yeah and enjoying talking about Fonica Pro. And today we're going to do a little more of the same. However, we're going to talk about the range tool. R. R. R for the range tool. R. Yes, and in fact, I call it the versatile range tool because you can do so much with it. For instance. Well, before we get into that, I, I did cover this way, way back. But since we have had so many new uh, subscribers since then, I thought it worth yeah. revisiting. Good. Okay, That's so a really good idea. Let's take a look. All right, so the first use of the range tool, by the way, it's in the tool palette under, uh, right here, R, just like you said, R, R, range tool. So let's work with it on an audio clip. Normally, you could select an audio clip. Actually, I'm going to select that. And you could use control plus and minus to, to increase just and lower the volume, the, just the volume uh -huh. right? But what if you want to adjust the volume on just a section of the music without affecting the entire clip. This is where the range tool comes in. So pressing R, you see the range tool, and I'm just gonna just drag out a range here, and I'm gonna use the same keyboard shortcuts, Control minus. Now notice, it's only adjusting the volume within, within, the, range. within the range. And then it's setting uh, keyframes there on the... But you can't see them because the range boundary is hiding them. So it's like click off, yeah, they you'll are. notice there are my keyframes, which then could be adjusted. Yeah, because um, by default, they're almost right on top of each other. Yeah, right? it's almost like a straight, you know, yeah. cut yeah, in the volume. Yeah, have, have them fade in and out a little bit. Right, so I'm going to undo that. I'm going to do the last few steps. So I, I've got this really nice range tool for adjusting the volume. And another way you could use the range tool is you could use it to mute a section. So, for example, let's say someone's talking here. I can select this and press... V and you just knocked out. So the V volume. is the disable key. Dis it's so like yeah. So disable and it disables just that range. Right. Whoop. Gone. Gone. Yeah. Right. And a lot of people don't know this, but if you put your pointer over the boundary between the silenced area and the non-silenced area, you'll get a rolling edit tool, so that you can so then you can adjust, adjust it after the fact. It. That's yeah. nice. Nice. So yeah. So it's nice, much better than splitting the clip and disabling the split piece because right. you could still adjust this after the fact. Now, I want to show you that you can do it this way, but the problem is like, I'd like to be able to fade in from oh, sound yeah, yeah, to yeah. the silence. And if you're using the, this technique on just the main audio clip, you're not going to have the ability to do the fades unless you work with components. So uh, let me show you how to do this exact same thing. Only this time, I'm going to right click on the click and choose expand audio components. So now we're looking at the component that happens to be one component. Be one, one, yeah. right. So again, range tool, drag across the component, press V. Same thing, but this time you'll notice there's these little handles, these little drag handles, so you can fade in uh, and out. So the that's silence. really cool. That's really yeah. cool. So if you're working at the component level, you can fade a disabled section or a disabled range, I guess I should yeah. say. That's nice. And you could still and you still have a trim tool. You could still move this still around. Both. Yeah, nice. you can do both. So it's actually better to use the range tool on a component. component. Yep. All right. Okay, now let's look at using the range tool on picture. We've done sound now, and I still have the range tool. What I love about the range tool is that you can just click and drag anywhere. Let's say I want to start here. I want to make a selection and copy and paste a section from here all the way to there. So I made a range, press command C to copy. Move my playhead to the end of the timeline and press command V to paste. So notice, just that section in within the range gets pasted. So only a portion of that first a portion clip. of those clips. Yeah. So you, you just selected the pieces of clips and the transition and it took all of just all of that them. chunk. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and you can also, uh, I made, I've already copied that selection. You can move your playhead wherever you want, and there's a command up here called Paste is Connected Clip, Option B. Now, when you do this, you may get a warning. It's like, remember when I made my initial selection and included a transition? Yes. Well, all it's telling me now is, like, I'll do that for you, but I can't include the transition. When it's a connected clip, it can't include the transition. Interesting. Yeah, so you have to break it apart. Yeah. But it's the same thing. Same, same selection, place. and really, it's not that big a deal. I mean, if you just copy that transition and, and just, just select it and Command V and put it on there, now uh, it's exactly yeah. the same. So and it created a storyline when you did that. It created a storyline mm -hmm. exactly. So that's a way to use the uh, range tool for copying portions of the timeline, and of course, using the range tool for removing unwanted stuff. So, for example, I I want to remove that. I can press D to delete or 
shift delete and it'll leave a gap. A gap keep, clip, keeps right. the timing. Most people know that, but it's it's worth repeating. Uh, the other thing that you could use the range tool for is, of course, three point editing. So, for example, I want a title starting here, and I want uh, here, and I want a title in there. Got my range. Press Control T, for the, and the default, title. default t the title is placed exactly within that range. And of course, that also works with um, anything in the browser. So, so like any connected clip. Any 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 connected clip up here. So, um, let's see here. If I just pick a an image here and uh, drag and then I can press Q and it matches that clip to okay that so you're basically your range is setting in and out points for Correct. your for your edit right okay that's great so that's essentially picture editing with the range tool yeah and let's look at um, let's look at speed changes with the range tool I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of this right here and let's say I want to do let's readjust my interface a little bit so here I have this like time lapse that we shot, and it's moving rather slow. But I may want it to speed up, like right through this section, like where maybe this note hits. hits. So right about there, I maybe want it to speed up. So range tool, and right about there, I'm just going to select a range. Okay. And so, so this is a sunrise time lapse. Right. So that you're going to basically do a speed ramp on. Speed ramp on, just okay. right in that range. So you define where you want the ramp to happen. Mm -hmm. And then using the speed control, you can say fast and just choose 8x here. And now it applies an 8x speed just within that range. So I'll play this now. With eases with, into yes, it. Yes, with eases, yeah. you'll see that there are easing handles right there. So as you can see, it's. So it just goes. Speeds through that section. Yep. Yeah, right on that note, it hits it about yep. 800. So rather than blading it or even doing a blade speed you could just set the range use the range tool instead of blade speed yep interesting it's a fast way of doing yeah. it just one way of doing it and the last thing i want to show you is using the range tool for effects so what i'm going to do is go into the effects browser and then go into the basics category and i'm going to drop this hard light effect on this clip so it makes this, this image nice and rich here and so I've got this effect applied, and now I'm going to press Control V to expand and, and reveal, I should say, reveal the animation controls on yes. the clip itself. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and open this up. See this little this little button here. You can expand the effect. So you can see here that this line indicates how much the effect is applied at 100. Yeah, so basically, you any adjust... animatable parameters will appear. Right, here. and so I'm adjusting it here. But what I can also do is set a range. So for example, uh, press R, set the range tool. I can drag out a range here. And then just like we saw with uh, the audio earlier, I can then drag up or down, in this case down. So I'm, a, I'm starting with the, I'm starting with no the norm effect, effect and, yeah. then, and then it's it applying the fat. Right, and then I can go ahead and adjust you know, how much. This is great, because I was actually doing this earlier by manually option clicking on the line to set keyframes, right. but the range tool's faster. I like that. Yeah. It's great. So range tool works great if you want to create ramped effects changes yep. inside the um, inside the clip animation, I call it clip animation editor. Then when you're done, you just close that up there and you've got this nice little effect that you've used the range tool on. Fantastic. And so that's uh, all the ways that you can use a range tool. Powerful yeah. tool. And you can get to it temporarily just by pressing and holding R rather than tapping on R yeah. and then let go again and you'll be back to your default tool. Yeah. Great tool. Awesome. Yep. Nice tips in there. Excellent. Uh, if you want to hear more about this, really get deep into Final Cut Pro 10, Ripple Training's place. Thanks again for watching us. We'll see you next time here on MacBreak Studio.